Hello everyone, it's Ethan from the Orlando Taurus. We're here at SeaWorld Orlando on September 9th, which is a Friday. We're here for opening night of Hallow Scream 2022. And we were here last year on opening night for the inaugural fear. And we're excited to see what changes they've made this year. We're covering some media. And um, we've been covering park updates in our last few visits at SeaWorld. As we were pulling into the parking, they had by the normal park entrance for Hallow Scream, they had a bunch of surf coaster track now on site. So we're gonna have a lot of surf coaster updates in the near future too. Well, let's check in for media. Also, I am covering media tonight on behalf of HHN Crypt, so make sure you give them a follow, check out their website. They have Instagram, Twitter. Um, yeah, just make sure you're following their site. Some amazing Horror Nights content and haunt content in general. And most of my content, I don't know if my house POVs will probably be on his channel. They might be in this video too. We'll find out soon enough, but stay tuned. And enjoy the video. So we've just checked in. We have our media badge, and um, we also have this cool light up skull that we got as we entered. And this thing will interact with the different scare zones, and will also blow fog if you uh, put water in the top of it. It just runs on water, and it will blow fog out of the nose and lights up. Interacts with the different zones. We're gonna be messing around with this tonight. It looks really cool. They are selling it in the gift shops for about thirty-three dollars. Right now we're heading towards the Sky Tower for a neat little reception. We'll keep you guys posted. They have front of the line passes here so you can buy Hollow Scream Express. There's going to be an exclusive photo op here and we have merchandise too. This is the Siren Encounter. We'll check that out later. Here's some scare zone props for the, these the cut through cove. We'll check it out later and make sure. Looks like we have a holding cell over here for the reception. So we're now here in the little reception. We have some merch display. We'll check this out in a minute. To treat you for us and have an awesome night. A uh, few housekeeping items. The lanyard you're wearing, that will be your front of the line here pass. So it gets you the front line of all the houses. It also gets you quick queue for the rides out the open. That's Icebreaker, Infinity Falls, Mako, and Manta. So you can, uh, it's a quick queue for those rides. Um, and then your queue after this, you can go into the park for the rest of the night and enjoy it. At 6.45, we'll be escorting you to one of our houses so you can get early access before the rest of the public. So that's exciting for you guys. Um, other than that, we just want you to have a great time. I want to introduce our Vice President of Entertainment, Cindy Miller. She has a few words. Hey everybody, thank you so much for coming out to our second wave of fear, Hollow Scream at SeaWorld Orlando. Um, we're really excited to bring our, um, our, our second year and all of the new items to you guys to preview for the first time tonight. Um, so this year, Biggest, um, biggest thing to note is our expanded footprint. So last year, we had the whole south side of the park um, for everybody to enjoy. Uh, this year, we continue the footprint all the way around the lake. So we have uh, the bridge open and we have two new scare zones over here. We have our house five, which is Blood Beckoning, um, the home of Scratch, our icon for 2022. Um, as well as Lurking in the Depths, which will be a uh, one-man comedy show that will take place right next door here at Pearl Dive. Um, and then this little hideaway right here, um, where we will have a drag cabaret later on tonight. Um, so definitely check that out. It's super fun. Um, it's a really good time, and it's a really good um, area for some, some laughs and some drinks. Um, so definitely stop by. Um, like uh, like Carl mentioned, you guys have your lanyards on, your skull lanyards, which is also new this year. Um, they will interact with different areas throughout the park, um, change in color and have some surprises as well. They will also turn off when we don't want them active. So um, if they're not working in certain areas, it's because we don't want them to work in certain areas. Um, we still have our no boo lanyard this year, which is our scaredy cat. Our scaredy cat lanyard means that our scare actors will not scare you in certain locations in the park. That means our scare, um, our um, scare zones, anything that's outside. If you do enter into a house, the lanyard is no longer valid. So just know that. Um, but if you're looking to just kind of observe and experience a lot of the other atmosphere, that's great. We do have great food and um, drinks also out on the pathways. Um, we have some new food this year that's definitely not to miss, as well as some new drinks inspired by our sirens. Um, so in case anybody doesn't know our story, darkness came upon us last year. Um, she is our lake siren. 
Um, and she is our host for our Siren show that takes place over in the Wild Arctic Plaza. And basically, that show is going to explain to you why Hollow Scream has come to SeaWorld Orlando um, and introduce to you, or she will introduce to you, uh, her sisters um, and basically all the surprises that they have for you. So that show is back this year. Monster Stomp is also at our Nautilus Theater, which um, is returning for its second year, and then, um, and which is also included in the lanyard for reserve seating. Um, a lot of really great merchandise, so please don't hesitate to, get, to check that out as well. Um, myself, as well as Kyle Smith, who's hiding somewhere here, um, we will be available uh, for interviews or any questions that you guys may have um, after this. So I hope you guys have a great time and enjoy our second wave of fear while we scratch the surface. Lost Souls Hideaway Bar is here at the Sky Tower. These are the prices for the different drinks. This is the alcoholic one. Which one is this? This is the Frost. This is the Frost. They also have it non-alcoholic. They also have this cool donut. So we have the Frost here. This one's non-alcoholic. Tastes um, kind of like a Hawaiian punch kind of thing. And how would you say the alcoholic one tastes? The alcoholic one is good. Uh, it's not too strong. It's a little on the lighter side, a little fruity, but it, it's nice. It tastes real nice. They had plenty of drink options at the bar. They had some blood bags, and they had like a drink themed to each of the different sirens. So it's really neat the theming that goes into the different beverages here. We have fog rolling over the, the, the lagoon, and we have a lot of cool music playing over at the entrance over there. This is the merchandise over here that we have on display. <laughs> A lot of cool Hollow Scream merch. We were at Bush Gardens the other day and a lot of the merchandise is very similar. We're about to interview one of the uh, SeaWorld people over here. I don't know if they're the creative head, we'll find out. But yeah, we're gonna interview. So we're here with Cindy. And are you part of the uh, social media department or the creative department for so Hollow Scream? I'm, I'm the vice president of entertainment for right. SeaWorld Orlando. So um, I work on creation, development, and the storyline of Hollow Scream as well as the um, production and execution of it as well. Okay. So compared to last year's event, last year was really fun. The first year that you guys had the event, how would you compare last year to this year? So I, um, one of our biggest point of differences from for this year is we have an expanded footprint. So we have even more um, screams and scares, a lot more places to hide, um, which is going to be um, pretty incredible. Um, we have an additional house this year, additional scare zones, and additional interactive bars. So just giving people even more of the, the things that they wanted and told us that they wanted from last year. Okay. Now how did you choose like which house is returned and which ones like you scrapped? Because I believe the... Uh, uh, Edgewater's Inn is not returning this year, and all the other ones have returned. Um, correct. So um, we did. We have two new houses this year. Siren of the Seas is uh, replacing Water's Edge Inn, um, but our um, Captain's Revenge and Dead Vines is also reimagined. So although it does have a similar theme from last year, the scares in some of the areas are definitely different. Okay. Um, and then Beneath the Ice was our fan favorite, uh, voted each year, each week um, as a fan favorite, so that's our returning house this year. Okay, and then um, if someone like was only able to have one night here, what was the thing that like they cannot miss? Oh, wow. Um, everything. <laughs> they do everything? Um, so I would say, um, you know, uh, a little bit of everything. I would definitely try to um, at least pop into all of our interactive bars, which I think definitely is a point of difference for us. Um, Blood Beckoning and our, our main icon, Scratch, this year is um, is featured in, in the house on this new expanded side of the footprint. Um, so I think I think that, and of course, you know, the shows are absolutely my favorite as well. Siren okay. Song, Monster Song, Lurking in the Depths, and then our new drag cabaret, um, Lost Souls Highway. So that's part of this bar? Yes. Okay. And speaking of the shows, um, are there any differences from last year's shows to this year? So, Siren Song and Monster Stomp are returning from last year. Um, they have some minor creative changes, but okay. they um, they are um, pretty similar to last year. Lurking in the Depths is the, brand the new show. tale. Yeah, it's brand new, um, and it's the the tale of a siren hunter and his interactions with the sirens. Okay, that's cool. All right, thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. All right. The event has officially started. As you can see at this bar area, they have a drag cabaret as well. So we're just gonna head around. I'm excited. I think we have a food stand right over here. Some uh, house cream food. We have a scare actor over here. This is the car cargo carnage area. But I believe this is like a siren or a siren minion 
that's over here. Scaring death. But yeah. We're heading into a scare zone over here. They're hiding pretty good. And right through, it's a pretty small zone. It looks like it keeps going though. And there's a house entrance over here, but we still have more of the scare zone right here. And they have it blocked off. And that seems to be the end of the zone. We have another food area here. Before we enter the house, we have some scare actors up there. You need to look at them from the top of here. Yeah. They really fog this area up. They scare you pretty good. Like I said, let's head into that house now. Entering blood beckoning to start the night, and we have a uh, fast pass here. This house looks really cool. We've been watching the construction for it. A lot of the same queue stanchion set up as last time. This is a cool sign here in the queue. We're also going to film a reaction on the GoPro. I don't know how good the uh, quality will be, but we'll find out for you guys. This facade's really cool looking. We're about to enter the house though. We have a scare actor here. We're heading into the first house of the night. I wonder if there's a hole here? This is supposed to be a scare actor. Thank <laughs> you. 
Like you're underground in subways and stuff like uh just like under some overpasses with graffiti um some really good theming i think that house is going to be really good at night though because there's some parts you do go outside and when you go outside it's really bright right now and i feel like they'll be able to hide better at night and you'll get more scares we're gonna have to definitely do that one again later and we'll let you guys know how it is and how it improves throughout the night still a fun maze though um, compared to last year, I wouldn't put that in my top. I would still say Captain's Revenge and Beneath the Ice is better than that one. And we have a cool little food stand right here as well. We're gonna go back in and get some photos right now. So the second run through, I was just getting photos through, so I kind of sped through the house. But we're back through the zone. It's kind of a dead end over here. Looks like we have a cast chain, different uh, creatures out with wings and stuff. This zone is pretty neat. It's kind of small, but it's got a perfect amount of actors. And they can get some really good scares in here. Okay, this is a whole different crew than what we saw earlier. Definitely gonna have to go back through that zone at night, but we're gonna head towards Mako, past uh, Monster Stomp. <laughs> this is the bar sign for the Lost Souls. It looks like some of the letters are earned. Over here we have some uh, more food tents for Hallow Scream. This scare zone had um, this scare zone had a uh, pirates last year, but it looks like we have a new theme. These props are crazy, I like this. These are really cool. She looks like a statue. This is gonna be really cool at night, all the lighting. This is a mirror, but it looks like they could scare you from the other end of the mirror. It's pretty neat. You can kinda see through it right now. Zone's gonna be really good at night, I already know. The Allure's on the Rocks themed bar is right here by Mako, outside of that scare zone. We're gonna head in and see if there's any good theming in there and what's going on. Some cool theming as we enter here. 
ties in with the scare zone. And we have Allura here. It's pretty cool looking. And we have some scare actor looking people in there. And yeah, definitely don't miss this bar. This one looks fun. I still thought this was a statue when coming in. It's crazy. This zone's called Terrors of the Deep. We will definitely get some night rides on Mako later. It will be a walk hunt. As you can see, we have the light up skulls over there that we're wearing right now. 8 o'clock, 9.30, and 11 are the show times for Monster Stomp. We get priority seating at 9.30, so we're gonna hit that show for Monster Stomp. More food tents over here. A lot of cool options this year for food. I haven't even filled it up with water and it started blowing smoke out of nowhere. It's definitely interacting. 8 o'clock right now. Um, we'll see if they reserve seating for this show right now. Let's... So we're gonna head over to uh, Monster Stomp later, probably the next showing. Let's do some more houses right now. This zone was here last year, the Witchcraft Bayou. It's pretty neat. Looks like we have fog rolling in. Let's see if we can get some scare actors in the streets. Up green as we're entering the Witchcraft Bayou. It matches with the lighting. That's really cool. This skull is pretty neat. They have the scaredy cat lanyards like what she's wearing. They, they will not scare you in the zones, but they will scare you in the houses. The houses are free range. It's also blowing fog now. It's lighting up red. It's really neat over here. We're gonna head into the Poison Grotto and show you around in there. Since Dead Vines exits here, we're gonna actually enter this bar after we do the house, and Infinity Falls is open during the event. So there's only been a few scare actors in this zone. It looks like they, they need a lot of scare actors for the event, so if you're interested, definitely scare here. <laughs> Let's head over to Dead Vines now. We're gonna head into Dead Vines now. These Q stanchions were here last year as well. We'll see if we get front facing uh, GoPro footage, but we're not gonna do any uh, reaction POVs because I just don't really get scared and uh, there's not really any good reactions for me. So I'm just gonna head through, get you guys some POV footage, maybe some photos if we walk through mm -hmm. twice. This house was okay last year. I'm hoping it actually got better because it was towards the bottom of my bottom of my list, and I just want to see some improvement with it. So hopefully we get that this year. Lucky for us, we get to skip the line, so that's awesome. Looks like they have a pretty big line here. And they do post the line, so this is amazing. And the skull's still lighting up, it hasn't shut off yet. It does turn off when you enter the house. Okay, we are heading into the house now. So far, it looks like the same start of the house as last year. Pretty similar to last year's house. They just keep growing. They just keep growing. 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 They won't stop growing. Why can't they stop growing? Oh, this guy got me good last year. There was a guy hidden. We're missing a scare there. Whoa! Oh, okay. That's a good one. There we go. I like that. A lot of sift here. him last year. So that house is way better than last year. They added a bungee and some other stuff in there. Theming is 
similar, but also really cool. The ending is way different. I love it way more than last year. I might do that one again a couple times. And then we have the Poison Grotto, which is a themed bar. We have an aerialist who comes and uh, performs up in there. We don't have him performing at the moment. Tons of drink options over here. And the uh, people at the, the register are all dressed in, uh, in theming as well. And this looks like it's for a VIP tour, so that's really cool. We're gonna do that house a couple more times real quick, just because the uh, focus was uh, going in and out, and uh, we're gonna get photos too, so that'll be two more run-throughs. If you get quick, you would definitely recommend it for this house, or fast, whatever they call it, the express line. It might be worth it, especially come October when they have busy lines. Definitely gonna be worth it. They won't stop growing. They won't stop growing. They won't stop growing. Just keep growing. Now we have an aerial performer up here. This is what we wanted to see before. I love this part of the bar. This person is amazing. And this is in a bar. I'm gonna head into that house one more time to get some photos. The line's getting longer and longer and it's for Pina because I do have a friend in here trying to get good footage. We're gonna head in Captain's Revenge next, right by Dead Vines, but this is the Deadly Ambush Zone. We're definitely gonna head in here later. This is the Captain's Revenge entrance. Huge way, but this was an amazing house. Let's enter the line. This is a long line for this. Wow, this is a queue. And same facade music as last year. Same facade. Heading into this Captain's Revenge house. This is my favorite last year.
So we just did Captain's Revenge twice. Compared to last year, well, Captain's Revenge was my favorite house last year. This year, it's still really good. I feel like I noticed some of the changes. It feels longer. They have a bungee at the end. Um, it's really dark in the house. So the footage we got, it's hard to see. It's just a very dark house, which is good for scares. Here we have Cass coming in for the deadly ambush scare zone. And possibly chainsaw hordes. But yeah, a lot of empty scares in the house, um, a lot of staffing that's not there compared to last year. So if you want to be a scare actor, there's plenty of open spots here at Hollow Scream. Now entering the deadly ambush scare zone. This scare zone was pretty fun last year. I don't think Jimmy's gonna be at the Christmas party. There's a lot of campers and they're gonna attack by like wolf band people. If you, finish, you have to tell me. I don't see any uh, wolf band people. I don't know where they are. Get out of here! It's January. Very dark. <laughs> it's very fogged up. I cannot see it all. Here we go. <laughs> Very dark in that zone. It's still, we're still going through the zone. Nice red lighting on the sky tower. This camper over here is pretty neat. Yeah, it's just super dark over here. And this is where they had some of the siren scare, uh, roaming hordes last year. Looks like the bridge is open, which is really nice. That'll be helpful for navigating around the park. And we also have the fountains over there that are all nice and lit up. I realized my camera got darker for some reason. We'll go back to that scare zone and get more footage. Now it's a little brighter so you guys can see. Yeah, we'll go back to that zone later and get more footage for you guys. Um, it was pretty dark in there though. And there was a roaming horde here. Maybe they'll have a roaming horde la later. A lot of merchandise here. They had a siren photo op here last year, but not this year. We have Beneath the Ice over here, which was an amazing house last year. We're gonna head over to this one. They have jello shots that they sell all around the park. This is going to be the, one of the most popular house lines of the event, as it was very popular last year. Also, Siren Song has the shows right over here, and we'll make sure to catch it later. And they have shows at 8, 15, 16, 9, 16, or 15, and then 10, 15, 11, 15. We'll be back here later. We're going to head into Beneath the Ice now. It's very busy. Yeah, so uh, this is going to be the busiest house. I like this house though. They're about to start the siren song. 
This is where Express and Normal merges, right before the house. Beneath the eyes, here we go. I would say that's the best house of the night so far. It was still better last year in my opinion than this year. Um, once they fill all those holes, it'll be a really solid house. Right now we're in the uh, Beneath the Ice or Wild Arctic gift shop. A lot of Halo Screen merch in here. A lot of cool stuff in here. Merchandise for everyone. A lot of light up neon stuff. You have your skulls here, which are really cool. The Scaredy Cat lanyards. A lot of cool bush gardens and SeaWorld Halo Screen. Patches, pins, lanyards, shirts. A lot of neat items in here to purchase. The theming in here is really good as well. As you can see, they have some generic horror type merchandise back here. And then there's your generic Halo Scream neon retro merchandise that they had this year. Right over here, we have another themed bar. We have the Tormented Bar. You can push buttons to scare people in the house. So they have this bar with some themed bartenders. They said the scare button thing is not working right now. They're having technical difficulties with the lighting and stuff. But um, they said if you buy it in the gift shop, then uh, that's where you can purchase the uh, scare buttons and do it in the house. This show's about to start very soon. We're gonna go film it on the phone and get photos here on the camera. The show's about to start in a couple minutes. So, but the show's starting now. I am the darkness. <laughs> when we sirens were howl and scream, howl and scream. My sister Hex is more than a dream. Her touch will make you wish for death as you struggle and shake to find your last breath.
why does no one help them? Because you know they deserve it. You hurt our mother. Now we will hurt you. Scarezone was here last year. It's called Frozen Terror. It's very dark in here, but we're gonna do this house right here first. Siren of the Seas. This one's a new house this year. 
It was the Edgewater's Inn last year, so we have a brand new house over here. About to enter this house. It looks like a boat and it's really neat looking. Wish there's a bit more lighting over here though. I can already tell this dark is gonna be this house is gonna be dark. This house is gonna be dark, I already know. Another themed bar, the Sirens Last Call. Amazing themed bar. This is where you enter and exit the event. They have a cool photo op and people will jump out of this photo op. We'll go back to the house later. We're gonna check out the gift shop right now. The skulls are amazing. A lot of the same merch we've already seen around the park. But you have more options here and a really cool display for all the merch over here. Yeah, really neat. Same merch we've already seen all night though. And here's the house shirt for this year as well. And if it's the same as Bush Gardens, it could be about yeah, $37. We have some sliders as we head back in towards the park. The sliders are really neat, sparking up the ground. That's fake. Yeah, they don't have the inaugural fear sign anymore because it's not the first event. Some exclusive views of Icebreaker. <laughs> Going through the scare zone that we walked by before. This one's really neat. 
get that nice full moon going tonight too. this zone. Back through the scare zone, we're gonna head through the deadly ambush. Hopefully my uh, brightness will be able to see a little bit better. We'll head through deadly ambush again later. We're gonna take the shortcut that's open this year on the bridge. I don't know if they have scare actors on the bridge, but they did not have the bridge open last year. So let's use it. Love the ambiance over here with the fountains. They're all lit up. Sky tower is also sort of lit up. And icebreaker looks awesome with this lighting. If we have time, we'll do some rides later, but we're just trying to show you guys everything about the event, and then we'll do rides last if we have time. These, these flags over here are representing this scare zone. We're about to enter the pirate one, and the Longshoreman Tavern, which is a themed bar, the last one we need to check out. And also, they have that themed bar by the Sky Tower. We're gonna see how that looks at night as well. Let's check out the Longshoreman Tavern bar. Let's see what's going on here. Have you met all the Longshoremen? You, you Okay, well, Lester. All right, that's Lester. Is there a comedy Lester, bar? Lester up there. All right, Max, what do you do for a living? I, I do support. You do support? Your, you, do you make... Oh, software. I thought you were talking about bras and stuff. Not that kind of support. I can use one, but no. No, that's not what you do. Okay, so you do support for software. So if you had to think about something that you told someone, I do these things for work, and this is one thing that I use all the time for your work, what would that be? A keyboard. All right, so what we would say is 99 keyboards. That's the Longshoreman Tavern. They got a lot of jokes in there. Um, now we're going to hit up this zone. We didn't hit this zone up earlier. This is supposed to be a pirate scare zone. And we have the siren photo op over here. As you can see, the path is blocked off there from the normal entrance to the park. So you have to en enter and exit at the other side, like last year where they had it. Let's see what this photo op looks like first, though. Looks pretty neat. They have some merchandise in here. There's no, there's no siren here yet. All right, now this scare zone looks like actually the same pirate one that they had over by Mako. Some of the same props. They just rethemed it a little bit and moved it over here now. But yeah, this looks pretty neat. Same set piece from last year though. It's called the Cutthroat Cove. I'm gonna walk the zone and come back through to get photos. Yeah. Lots of still walkers over here. That's pretty much it for this zone. So we missed five minutes of this show. It's some guy that tells a tale about the deep. It hasn't even started yet. That show hasn't started yet, so we're gonna check out the bar where we were at earlier for the media event, the beginning of it. We're gonna see what it looks like at night, all lit up. This is also where they have the drag show, they said. So now they only have that open for the, uh, the shows. It's not gonna be open for, um, it's not open as a bar, it's just as a bar and as the media, but now it's just shows. This show is starting in about four minutes. Oh yeah, darkness. Hex. The twins, flame and frost. And the worst one of all, scratch. Yeah. Those sirens are nasty, wicked things, and how do I know so much about them? Well, it's real simple. I hunt them. And you know who I am, right? No. Seriously? Seriously? Seriously. Oh, come on, guys! I am Sam Hunt, and 
thank you for being on time. <laughs> I am Sam Hud Hudson. That's right, I put the H-U-D in Hudson. Hunter under the deep. Yeah, it doesn't stand for housing and urban development. That's right, Oz, that was a dad joke. No comments from the Penguin Gallery down there, okay? You just stay there, net fish, and chill. That's right, I am the most famous and most expensive monster hunter on the market. Do you know why? It's because I believe. I believe in everything. To hear my story, my legend. So let me tell you a tale of my time on the trail of those five singing monsters that we call the sirens. Now my tale begins at the beginning. It's a good place to start as any. When I was a kid, my father had a friend named Adam, who was also an adventurer and explorer. And he used to come over to our house and tell us his stories. My dad always said never trust an Adam because they make up everything. Yeah, I didn't get that joke when I was a kid. All right, go ahead, stand right there on the trap door. That was aptly timed. Well, what's your name? Katie. Katie. Everybody say hi, Katie. Hi. All right, Katie, where are you from? California. What part? Outside of San Francisco. You know, I've been to San Francisco six months ago. That's right. You know what I was doing there? I was chasing a hate just off the coast of San Francisco. You know what I learned? I ain't gonna do that again. Gotcha. You like that one. Okay, so, um, I'm sorry, what was your name again? Do you mind if I call you Bait? Okay, cool, cool. So this is Bait right here. Uh, Bait is gonna help us draw in the siren so that we can capture her. Uh, stay right there. First things first, Bait. What? What's that? The penguin? No, no, he's very attached to me. You want him? There, there's definitely going to be games you can go win one. We'll talk about it later. All right, so here we go. When we're dealing with a siren, you got to have protection. So there you go. Put that on. Yeah, you thought you thought crabs were bad? Ooh. I'm talking about ear mites. Ear, get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> okay, can you hear me? You can. Okay, I forgot to turn them on. Okay, now that she can't hear me, I'm going to tell you exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to give her a contraption. It's going to make a lot of lights. We're going to make a lot of noise. We're going to draw the siren in. When it's chewing it down on Bates, Bates bones, I'm going to get a net. I'm going to throw it over the ball. I'm going to bag me a siren. Who's with me? Ouch. Don't let on. Dick. All right, thank you very much. Now, I got something else for you. It's not the penguin still, so don't get excited. This thing right here, you see this? This is special, but it's still just a flashlight. A flashlight. How, how'd you know that word? All right, it's here, you hold that. Now, the button's on the bottom. Turn that on. Wow, you didn't even have to buy a dinner dancing. All right, hold it up in the air. Hi. Full extension. There you go. Now when I point at you and I say light them, you're going to spin once in a circle. Ready? Don't go too fast. We don't want you getting dizzy. Ready? You're going to turn in a circle. Ready? Light them. Yeah. Light them. Okay, folks. So when I point at you, I want everybody here to say up. Got it? Ready? And up. Follow the finger. Up. Here we go. Up. Light them. Listen, folks, I'll make you a deal, okay? Um, you, you stay right there, and, and, and when she gets here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run that way. 
right? And she's gonna chase after me. That way you can get away. Teamwork. And then, and then, and then you can come back later to see if I actually survived for the next show. Won't, won't, won't that be a hoot? Yeah, come see if Hot lives this time. They dilate. Get it? Oh, come on, dads. You gotta help me out with this one, right? You gotta help me out with this one right now. So we just saw the Lurking in the Depths show. It's about this guy making a bunch of jokes about his tales and it's about 15 minutes long and he, he almost encounters a siren at the end, but he doesn't and it was just really bad. But yeah, I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. That was just not a good show and everyone around us was saying like, they did not enjoy it. Like everyone was saying it was bad, not just me. It was the general consens consensus of that show was that Lurking in the Depths is, wasn't that great. I would not even do it if you're here, like, just miss out on it. Like, if you have time, you're walking by, listen to some jokes, I'd say, it's alright, but like, it wasn't, just hit the other shows in the house instead. We're doing this zone at night now. The camera focuses. This looks really cool at night. We did blood beckoning earlier. We're not gonna do it now to save time. That last house that we did before, I really like and we're gonna do that again. We're also gonna head to the show, the Monster Stomp. Yeah, this zone's pretty, pretty decent zone. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna head to Monster Stomp now. And there is a camo guy in this bush here. I don't know if it's part of the roaming board. But he's getting people, as you can see. There he is. But yeah, let's head over to Monster Stomp Starts in about like 10 minutes or so. So this is one of the roaming hordes. We have the camo people. There's like two of them in here. There's like three of them over here. Oh yeah, they're getting people good right now. They're doing their rattle and shaking the plants. It's funny when the plant shakes. I like that. There's some more of them over here in this bush. These camo people, I didn't really see them last year. Oh, this is a cool stilt walker in this zone. I knew this zone would be nice at night. It looks amazing. This zone is really cool at night though. Four minutes into the last monster stomp showing, let's head over there. Mako still walk on. Alright, let's head in. We're about to start the show.
Monster Stomp. It's the exact same show as last year. Different actors playing some of the characters. Same storyline. They didn't continue a part two. It's just the same exact thing. Hopefully we will get like a continuation in the future though. Um, change some stuff up. Still a pretty solid show. I definitely recommend checking it out when you're here. We just went through the Witchcraft Bayou. We're about to go through Deadly Ambush, but I want to see some of these chainsaw people that I can hear. Chainsaw person there. We got a bunch of chainsaw people over here. It's a slider. It's a slider. Chainsaw Horde is now in the scare zone right now. Now you can see a little bit better in this zone. A lot of fog over here. Cool lighting here. They need more lighting in the zones. Um, yeah, last year is very dark, and that's all they needed. Pretty much just more lighting. There's sirens roaming over here. Ah! I was waiting to see these later, or earlier today. Ah! So we're gonna keep walking through the zone, see if there's any more sirens on this end. As you can see, we have a couple, or at least one over here. We have a nice four sirens. All right, let's head over to the uh, sirens call house again. That was an amazing house. Crowds have somewhat thinned out. We're gonna do this house. And it looks like they have cameras now for this bar, so you can actually do this. So now you can see, you can activate scares. Yeah, that one got me. I got the hair. This house entrance is right over here. I love this house. Go back through. We're gonna get some uh, photos this time. We have lighting at the facade now. This looks really cool. I like this now. Welcome aboard! Get to your
went through that house again. We're gonna do it one more time. The uh, GoPro wasn't filming vertically for some reason. I'm trying to get some extra footage. It might be really dark though. I'll probably film through this house again. They had like a scare or two that wasn't there earlier, so I saw it this round. I still really like the house. That one's my favorite. The Siren of the Seas is a must do. It's right at the beginning of the park. You can't miss it. Definitely a really good house. Really solid. Back to this zone again. This zone, pretty neat decor. They had this one last year though. He's gotta be safe. As we exit, there's one more food stand at the exit. This is the entrance that you would normally come into the park as a guest. This is the parking extended lot. Since we got media today, we were um, all the way in a different spot. So this is where you're gonna enter normally. And there's a few rules that SeaWorld has with this. They do have some metal detectors over here, but also um, they have got a pretty strict bag requirement. So make sure your bag fits in the dimensions. Look on the website, but I believe it's from eight by uh, five inches. That's the bag requirements. Um, sometimes they're a little lenient. They were last year on opening night, but it was also probably it was the first year that they were doing it and it was opening night. But try to fit your bag in the requirements so you have an easy process while entering the park. Also, um, from my experience last year as a normal guest, because I did come here not doing media, um, once we entered this entrance, we hung out in that courtyard area, like where that house exited that we just did. Um, that's where we hung out and for like 30 minutes to an hour before the event started. Here's a closer look at the park entrance for Alice Cream. This looks amazing, it's just scratching the surface. Yeah, so that park entrance had a bunch of blue flames last year, green flames actually. I don't know what color, if they have flames this year, I didn't get to see it. But anyways, like I was saying, they have a little holding cell over there. So once you enter, you stay there for like 30 minutes to an hour before the event starts. You could buy merchandise. Um, use the restrooms, experience one of the bars before you head into the actual park. Another thing I'd like to point out is that filming is not allowed in the houses and photos cannot be taken in the houses on a normal night of house screen that was only for media night tonight. And also, yes, it's an 8x5 inch bag policy is what they have. Um, they do have a stay and scream at the event, so if you're already in the park during the day, they have designated areas just like Universal where you could stay at the park, get there a little early, and then you can start off with some of the houses before other people get a chance to. So it's really neat and it's a nice, easy way to bang out a lot of houses before the crowds come. Did notice that there's a lot of holes in the houses and they definitely still hiring people. So if you wanna scare act, this is the place to do it. Um, the lines are getting busy, so Express will come in handy. Our Express tonight did really help. The Skull Lanyards were really cool, solid addition to this year. They interact in the park really nicely. Um, they're a little pricey at $35, but um, I still think they're really fun. Um, hopefully they will work next year. They will carry over. And I still really hope for better lighting in the future. I thought the lighting was just kind of okay this year. Because um, the lighting in the zone, sometimes it's really hard to see. People are hitting into each other. And it also, the photos also don't come out as good. But that's just for me. Um, Anyways, it's a really fun event. I definitely recommend checking it out. We will come back sometime in the near future. Really solid event this year. I love how much they've expanded. 
Um, the shows are great, the, the new houses are great, the new zones, really fun. We didn't get to do any coasts in the dark, but we'll probably be back next week to check out some new benefits and everything. Also, um, when you're parking, that's when you could get your physical park map. You gotta get at the parking tolls. We totally didn't get to pick it up today. So future Ethan here, there's a few things I forgot to include before I end the video about SeaWorld. Obviously I talked about the lighting already and some of the missing scares. Hopefully they might improve some of that throughout the season. Um, since I'm coming from the future right now in this video, some of my friends went on uh, the second night of the event and they said the scares already improved that they added some more in the houses. So as long as they keep staffing them, those houses will be really good and we will come back later on and check it out how the event improves. Um, definitely try to get the Express or try to get multiple days of the event because there's a lot to do this year as they expanded the park size there's so much to do we didn't even get to do everything in time we were rushing with the express pass to get everything done like we didn't sit at any of the bars we just checked them out so if you want to drink there's definitely you gotta have more time during that event um we didn't check out the drag show that they had but like there's there's some other stuff but um basically the event ended at midnight for us I believe some nights it does close at 1, so that's less than horror nights. So definitely, you have less time at this event and a lot more to do. So definitely try to expand on that as much as possible or just try to pick things that you really want to see and get those things done at Hallow Scream. With that being said, they've also added a bunch of food tents. We didn't get to try any food, we didn't really have time to. They have a lot of food options this year, they didn't really have that last year. Food options seem really cool, one of the stands has live, or not live, but actual like bugs on the food. So pretty neat and pretty weird food options. That one show lurking in the depths really isn't that great. Um, unless you really like puns, I make a lot of puns and I make them really bad and that show was just not that great. No one in the audience liked it. Hopefully they will improve the storyline as the event progresses, whether they add a siren in the show or if they change up the jokes that could improve the show and I'd like to see that in the near future. And also, like I was saying about how you need more time in the event, the rides, we didn't do any rides. So if you want to do rides at Hallow Scream, make sure you make time for that. That's why you need to go multiple days or get Express. All right, now back to the video. Really fun night. Thank you so much, SeaWorld, for inviting us out. And thank you so much, HH Encrypt, for letting me cover this event for you tonight. Really appreciate it. And I can't wait to cover some more events and stuff at SeaWorld. And uh, thank you guys for watching, and I have a lot more Hallow Scream stuff posted on my social media, as well as some Horror Night stuff. So definitely follow me on social media on Twitter, at Ethan Hershaft, and on Instagram, at Florida Theme Park Picks. And we'll see you guys in the next one.